he might be able to reach. Morning guys, welcome back to our off-grid homestead and our garage above the apartment build. Today we're gonna to be setting trusses. It's just gonna be Julie, Seth and I, and maybe one other person setting all of the trusses up here. We've got them all marked right where they're going to go. And I am pre-drilling the timber lock screws that are gonna hold them down. Jules is gonna be going down this side right here. I'll be going down the other side over here. Seth, we're planning on him actually being in the middle and using these spacers right here to set them. And look at what it's doing now, man. It's raining. It's raining now. We've got the strong back set right here for that first truss. And like I said, we're wrapping things up. And man, it's starting to rain hard now. <laughs> Lame. Lame. <laughs> 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 Oh yeah, yeah, you're fine. We're so getting the truck all leveled and balanced and secure so we can use the crane to operate to lift the trusses up. We bought the big truck today. It has a bit more of a reach than the one that did the floor trusses. He's just testing it out right now to see what kind of reach he can get. <laughs> he might be able to reach. These are the same ones that we actually use for the house, and um, so yeah, you just reuse them if you want to. <laughs> yeah. Set the spacers up at the top. This is one of those timber lock screws that we're using to secure the trusses to the top plate. It's a six inch long screw designed exactly for that. And it says on the box that it can replace hurricane ties just by using this. This is the good life. So it's coming along pretty smoothly. I feel really rushed, although we shouldn't feel rushed, although we are paying by the hour <laughs> for the crane. So. We just want to do it right and Need not to calm get my hurt. Spirit. Huh? <laughs> we just want to do it right and not get hurt. In the... That's right. These vaulted ceiling trusses, I think they're going to be nice and make it look a little bit bigger up here in the living in this great room area. Yeah, because it's a pretty small space. Yeah, it's a small space. <laughs> yeah. One more is coming. Hey, Tuxer. Hey, good boy. What you doing? You want to go to work? You want to go to work? Okay, got it. Are you over there? You're over? Yeah, I'm flush. Is that it? Okay.
that was a pretty rainy day, guys. We had a couple of days of rain right after that. And so we got the trusses up. We got them braced enough so that they wouldn't fall down. And then we ran inside and just hung out, right? So it took a couple of days until we could really get back out here and start working on them. But check out what we've gotten done. We got all of the bird blocking in and then that blocking underneath the bird blocking for where the OSB will come up and end right along the eave right there. The bird blocking, if you don't know, is for ventilation, right? So cool air can come in through these holes right here and travel up and then go out a vent. You could go out the gable ends, or you could go out the ridge vent. Different type of ventilation, but the design is to keep the attic space cool in the summer and cold in the winter. So you don't get an ice dam forming over here on the eave. Oh yeah, we also got the blocking in up here along the ridge all the way down. And we built, I don't know what these are called. I'm maybe barge rafters. I'm not sure. But it's for the overhang on the gable ends, right? So basically the trusses, when we ordered them, this piece of truss right here is actually a one two by six width lower than this one over here. And so they add a little section right on here for the rafter tail that comes out over there, right? And then you build these rafters that extend out. And so basically they're butted up against this truss here. And they overlap this end truss, this gable inside, and extend out two feet. Then you put a big four foot block in there. And then you connect this one right up there and it goes over it and extends out. And you do that every four feet until you get up to the top. And then that way, when your sheathing goes over, you gotta place the nail at every four feet right on the seam. At least that's the plan. We'll see how it works out when we actually get the sheathing on there. I apologize for not filming all of that blocking. It was basically just Julie and I doing it. Seth was busy with school. So it was hard to film. Plus you're like pointed up in the air and the sun is up there and so, Filming it just didn't, it just wasn't gonna come out good. And so I figured I'd just show you what we've got after we got it done. And so if you'd like to see what else is going on here on our homestead, there is a video right over there you can go ahead and check out. Otherwise, I hope you have a really great day. Keep smiling and I will see you over in that video in just a second.